Mr. Jarrett please. how are you? I'm good. Uh, so I'm going to bring up your um, uh, desktop here. But Gerald, real quick, who are you? Why are you here? Who am I? That's a good question. <laughs> um, so my name is Gerald. I'm all the way from the Netherlands, where it's dinner time right now, as you as you have guessed. I work on the .NET Maui team uh, before Xamarin Forms. I've been this past June, I've been on with Microsoft for four years. Uh, before that, Microsoft MVP, if you know what that means, well, it basically means I've been out there in the community for a long time doing sessions like this, writing blogs, doing something on YouTube uh, for a little while now. Well, he, um, he is he's a rock star on YouTube. That's just a you know, <laughs> gentle drop. Thank you. Um, so yeah, doing all kinds of things, uh, usually around .NET Maui, but you know, also some other things because... The app is not just the thing on your phone, right? It's also a back end and all kinds of other stuff. So, yeah. um, doing things. And right we have right. lots of friends in our chat room. Flashover is talking ah, about cool. DateCon for this coming up in Prague. Yeah, then yes. when is that? Uh, that's the end of November, um, 2024, 20, 25, 26, something around there. Uh, UpdateConference.net. I've oh. just been there. This That's why I know the URL. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. They they asked me I to be there, and I have two sessions: one on like what's coming up on for .NET Maui, uh, for .NET eight because we have .NET Conf right also in November where .NET eight is being launched, um, and one about I think Blazor hybrid stuff. So all the amazing Very things cool. that you can do with .NET Maui and Blazor. Yeah. I've heard good things. I'll I'll submit. And uh, this is so true, uh, Gerald. I don't think you you hear this <laughs> enough. Um, you reach hundreds and thousands of people with your videos. So thank, thank you. you. Yeah, that's that's still mind blowing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's that. Yeah. If, so with each milestone, I try to look up like, hey, what you know, what I now at like thirty one thousand, and I'm like, what what is a thing that fits thirty one thousand people, right? So there's already like a massive football arena or something like that. Like that's thirty thousand people. So imagine that they're all there. And it would feel a, a football stadium, right? So that's that's really crazy to see these numbers like this. It's easy to forget that it's big numbers and crazy things are going on. All right. So what is this thing called the community toolkit? Yeah. So one of the things that I'm also doing that I'm also involved is is the uh, community toolkit. And that has existed in a couple of forms. Uh, maybe the most um, um, known one, well-known one, is the Windows Community Toolkit, uh, which has existed since like forever, um, and it has a lot of amazing things. But that's very much specific to Windows development, right? So Windows apps uh, in all kinds of shapes and forms. Um, they had some UWP stuff, now WinUI stuff, and they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I think they're even like part of the actual Microsoft Store in Windows and whatnot. So they have um, big showcases, which is really amazing. Then at some point, for Xamarin, we wanted to do the same thing. Uh, we had a couple of controls that needed to move out of uh, the Xamarin Forms package. Um, and we were looking for a home. And together with that, like if you've been working with Xamarin Forms before, then you probably know that there is a ton of uh, converters that you're using in XAML and maybe behaviors and all these kinds of other small things um, that are really handy to have that you probably have a couple from in your project. Um, and that's how it goes, right? Like you have one in one project and then you copy that to the next project and then you tweak it a little bit and suddenly you have two. And then you go to the next project and suddenly you have three because you tweak it each time maybe a little bit um, and you copy it over and over because it's too small to wrap into its own labor library, um, but it's still a very handy piece of code that you need in all your projects. So what we try to do with the community toolkit is a couple of things. We are kind of like... Um, a, a lower threshold project, um, a lab, if you will, where we can try new uh, controls for the actual Xamarin forms. And I'm, I'm speaking in the past and now .NET MAUI, of course, because we went along with the transition to .NET MAUI. Um, so the controls to try out for .NET MAUI, like, hey, what, what sticks, what doesn't stick, um, Maybe let the API mature a little bit, have a have it give it some development before it ends up in the actual package, or maybe it never ends up there. Um, and we just have these ton of converters and pre-built animations and all that stuff that um, you can just plug into your application, which is super handy, but will probably never make it into .NET Maui itself um, because of reasons. Um, but it's still very nice to have in your application. So. Before, you had Xamarin Forms, Xamarin Essentials. That was kind of like Xamarin Essentials was already part of uh, the default templates by then. And now it's part of the actual .NET MAUI product. We took that in. Um, and it, now it I think... 
it just got like so essential that it's not there yeah. anymore. <laughs> Exactly. And I think for uh, the community toolkit, we're kind of going that way, um, where like, you know, people saying like, oh, yeah, every .NET Maui project, the first thing I do, install the toolkit, and that gives me like 80% of all the stuff that I need. So that's really cool. All right. And so um, who who helps out with this right now? Because it's not just you, it's, it's the community. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So this has been kind of a search and recently we actually expanded the team and to my big shame i have to admit that i don't know now all the people that are involved <laughs> um because it's very recent this is like like a week or the week before and there was some vacation in between um but there's me there's brandon minnick who is a former microsoft and big donet bowie fan um, we have Vladislav, who has also been using Xamarin forever and also uh, using .NET MAUI. We had uh, Pedro Jesus uh, from Brazil. Um, and he took it a little bit slower because he's doing some other projects, but he's still very much involved. We have Sean Lawrence uh, from the UK. He even wrote a book on .NET MAUI, so go check that out. Um, so we have a ton of people who have been around since the Xamarin time, now .NET MAUI, who know all about what's going on here. Kim Philpotts, he works at Microsoft. Uh, you might know him from the live streams as well. Um, so, um, yeah, we, we have all those people. We expanded a little bit more because we were hitting our limits with our dreams, what we wanted to do with this toolkit um, and the time that people have because it's still the community toolkit, right? So even if I work at Microsoft, this is something that is called .NET Maui. But, you know, I'm not, I don't have any time allocated during my day job to work on this, right? So everything that everyone does on this project is in their own time. So it's really a community toolkit. We're trying to do this for you, but also with you. Um, but, you know, as it goes, um, people are busy. We are busy. Um, so, you know, outside contributions is always hard, uh, but we managed to find a couple of extra people who are going to help us out with all the um, essential features that we want to still add in here um, to make this the best toolkit there is for your .NET Maui apps. Very cool. And um, just real quick uh, before you go on, uh, Carl, uh, I think you, you are spelling the other Sean. There, there's another Sean yeah. here in the chat room. <laughs> that is S-H-A-U-N, Sean Lawrence. And, and he'll, he'll be on with us. Uh, and I've also heard great things. Uh, and, and it's not just Sean. I think there are like a, three or four other people yeah. who have written books on Dr. Maui, which is amazing. Oh, actually, while you're sharing my screen, let me just pull up a couple yeah, of things. We're yeah. totally going off script, right? So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, still, still valuable. Learn.net Maui. So github.com slash jfslaus, which is my handle. Look it up. Um, Learn.net Maui. Maybe Sam can paste it in the chat. I'll paste it to yeah, him and yeah, maybe you can sure pass can. it through. Um, and this is like, this is a repository where I try to, a lot of people have asked me like, why is this not called the awesome.net Maui, right? That's kind of like the format, but it's slightly different. Um, so here is where I try to kind of like aggregate all the resources that you can find on .NET Maui right now. Um, so it has a little bit of explanation here, blah, blah, blah. Uh, official links with like the GitHub repository for .NET Maui, the docs, the learn path, all that kind of stuff. Um, and here's the resources, right? So I have blogs, books, code, plugins, whatnot, um, example repositories, social media accounts. There's a lot of people active on social media that talk about cross-platform development. Go follow them there videos, other, um, but here on their books, <clears throat> we have a couple of books right now. So there's already like one, two, three, four, five, six, if you count the German one, uh, six books about that and Maui, which is a product that has not been out for like a year, a year and a half, almost two years now. So that's crazy, right? They were just super busy and they started writing. Um, here's the one from Sean introducing that Maui. Um, I've been involved in basically almost every one of those. So Donald Mary in action, I've been the reviewer for that one. Mm -hmm. um, so all awesome books. Yep, Go check I've, I've told Dot Matt as well. And we're missing Matt here. Um, uh, Matt's family is, I think, is in the UK. Matt lives in, uh, in Australia, and uh, there were some, you know, health issues. So we are missing out oh, Matt. Wow. But you know, um, big kudos to Matt and Sean yeah. and you know Jesse and uh, everyone else for writing books. Absolutely. Yep. Perfect. So. I guess um, I'm just taking over the show, Sam. Um, so going back to the community toolkit. So uh, I already mentioned like we have a ton of stuff, right? We also, we are on learn.microsoft.com. So the official documentation, uh, we begged them until we could actually, you know, host our docs here because we're not really an official Microsoft project. Uh, we are an official .NET Foundation project, but we managed to get in here with our documentation anyway. So we have a ton of stuff here, supported versions, blah, blah. But also we make it our priority to nothing gets merged without having documentation, right? So um, again, this is all done in their free 
time. So is, uh, I'm not going to say they're bad, but is the quality always like the official doc where we have dedicated writers? Probably not, but we are trying to do the best we can with, with what we have, right? And I think it's well enough for just getting started and then exploring the APIs on your own. So if you just start here, you can see what's here, right? So we have a bit of setup. Um, as with a lot of the .NET MAUI plugins, you need to add a NuGet packages, obviously. Then you need to do a little in initialization line with the uh, app builder, like, hey, use MAUI Community Toolkit. And suddenly you're digging in all the power of the toolkit right here. We have now a couple of separate packages um, that usually happens when we need to take on a dependency on some other library and we don't want to just give the dependency to everyone, uh, right? Because that will bloat your application. That's not what you want typically. So we've broken up a couple of the things. Like one of them is the media element uh, where you can play videos and audio that takes a de uh, dependency on some Android stuff that we're using the Exo player. Uh, and we have the maps. Um, we have a maps implementation as well. <clears throat> So uh, this is, there's a little backstory here as well. Uh, there is the official Maps implementation for .NET MAUI, which supports iOS and Android. Uh, but for Windows, there is no official um, um, element that will show you Maps right now. So this kind of presented the .NET MAUI with a problem, uh, .NET MAUI team with a problem with like, hey, what are we going to do? We're not really building our own controls, right? That's not what we do. That's not what we want to do. That's not something that we want to maintain. Um, but we kind of have to if we want to support our kind of like three big, biggest platforms, right? So this presented us with a problem and kind of like as an intermedi intermediary uh, solution, we decided like, hey, we're putting this in a community toolkit. We are building a web view uh, with Bing Maps in it. You have to put your Bing Maps API key in here. Um, and then you can use the maps as you're used to on all the platforms, right? iOS, Android, Windows, uh, without anyone noticing, we're supporting the same features, the same things. So that is really, really cool, I think. And that's one of the really cool things about this toolkit as well. There's this real uh, collaboration between the official .NET MAUI team and the toolkit team because I'm on both, right? So that makes it super easy. Uh, and then we can kind of like easily navigate through these kind of like gray areas where um, an official solution might be a little bit harder, um, but we have this amazing solution that's still Microsoft official. So that's cool. Yeah, no, well, well done. And I mean, almost every enterprise app, uh, many, you can think of, you know, needing mapping. So we needed that. Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. Your app instantly looks cool with a map. I don't know how, I don't know why that is, but it, just a map, it looks cool. Um, so we have all these things, right? We have things with alerts, snack bars, toasts, uh, pre-built animations, a ton of behaviors uh, to kind of like, you know, do things with email validations, uh, your status bar, like the top thing on your device. You can give that a color dynamically for each page or you just set it once on your application, all that kind of stuff. All the converters that you want to use with XAML. See, so you can convert co colors to basically everything, to strings, to inverse colors, to percentage of black key. I don't even know what it does. Look it up because we have the um, documentation. Um, so you can just see what this is, right? So we have all these converters that you can use in XAML. Um, and then we have like the really cool stuff, right? So we have a couple of also essentials, which is more the non-UI stuff. Uh, so we have a folder picker, right? So you can pick a folder on the file system. I think that's supported on all the platforms. Uh, a file saver, so you can just feed that with um, data of a file and it will save that to the file system, which is just a little convenience helper thing, basically on top of system.io uh, um, um, file writing things. Uh, speech to text, which is really cool. So you can just, you know, while I'm talking here, you can translate that into text and then you can hook that up. I think there's a demo in here somewhere uh, by Vladislav who hooks it up to chat GPT and then um, kind of like uh, does Windows commands with it. So that's really cool. Uh, but re what really like we have a ton of other stuff, but what really speaks to the imagination is like the views, right? So we have a couple of controls, uh, the drawing view. So you can uh, draw uh, I don't know if we have screenshots in here. We have you can draw things on your screen. See, you can mm -hmm. just have this little canvas. And you can draw things on it. You can export that to an image if that's what you want. You can make this your signature pad and put that in a PDF. Um, go crazy with it. Um, we have the expander, so that's kind of like your accordion view, right? So you can have these headers and you can um, expand them, so they will um, show more items uh, coming from there. Um, the lazy view, which kind of like gives you power over when something is loaded. Uh, so that will help you with your performance, right? So if you have a big page that uh, should not load when your application starts, but you want to load that laser later on in a lazy way, you can just say, hey, I wrap that in a lazy view and you can load that on demand whenever you need it. 
Um, and then one like the media element, like I said, this. So this oh, who, who documentation. Is this who is this guy? He looks funny uh, with the same shirt and the same background. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is this is really cool. So this documentation page is very very good. Not because I wrote it, but because someone else wrote it. Uh, because at some point it was an official control, uh, but it was taken away from there because it wasn't too stable in exam forms days. Um, so, but I had a ton of content already that I could use for this docs page. So that's why this one is pretty extensive in comparison to the rest. Um, but yeah, you can also do a lot with this, right? So you have this big control that you can do all these cool things with. Um, so yeah, there's a lot to go over here. Um, of course, we have this all in a nice repository, um, which is can be found in github.com community toolkit uh, slash Maui. Because now, um, you know, with this whole Maui rebrand and 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 also together with the Windows community toolkit, uh, and we have the .NET toolkit, right, which you probably know from all the MVVM stuff. Uh, we kind of like did similar things, but for different kind of focus areas. Um, so we, of course, are talking to each other and we were like, hey, what if we kind of like go under the same umbrella, we call ourselves community toolkit, and then you have community toolkit.maui, community toolkit.windows, mvvm.net, uh, maybe Blazor one day. Um, so we have all these projects and now they live under like github.com slash community toolkit. So you can find us all there. Uh, so we live in the same space. We, we talk to each other. Um, and here we have the Maui one, right? So we're also taking this a little bit broader than, than, than just uh, the Maui stuff, which is really cool. All the stuff is here, all the information. If you want to kind of like get started, obviously go to the documentation, uh, the API stuff. Also, if you want to, you know, propose a new feature, we kind of like have a process for that um, because else at some point we found ourselves with like someone came up with an idea. We were like, oh yeah, cool. We're going to build that. But, you know, suddenly you're building all kinds of crazy things, which is really cool. You want to be complete, but you don't want to overdo, right? So we have a bit of a structure here to kind of propose something and then um, taking it from, from initial idea to actual implementation together with all the documentation and everything that comes with it. So that we at least look professional, right? Um, so we have all that. We have monthly standups, also live streamed on YouTube on the .NET Foundation channel. Um, and then if you open this up in Visual Studio, and I have this weird bug in Windows where my icons go away sometimes. So I'm just going to have to guess what well, that, it is. That's a bug. I was thinking like that's a feature because... No, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a fun to keep you on your toes. Like, hey, which one is it? Um, if you open this up on, on, on Visual Studio, then you'll get all of this, right? So the way that you can go about this, we also have a sample app. Um, and that's usually what I also try to use for development. Um, because, you know, in that sample app, you will have a link to like all the other projects. I don't know if it's very visible. It's a little bit small, probably. Let's see if I can zoom it in. Yeah. Not so great, but it works kind of. Um, so we have the solution and then we have like a couple of folders and this is like the main project, right? So we have the community toolkit main, the core, the maps, the media element. So all the products that you want to find here and that's linked to our community toolkit Maui sample, which is just a .NET Maui project um, sample app. So you can just run that and you can start writing your code here in the main library. You can hope that immediately consume that in the sample app and you can try to test as you go. So if you do that and run that on Android, of course, you can also run it on Windows, iOS, whatever you have for your setup. You will get into this um, sample app. If you are a great wizard with designing, there is a pretty task for you to redesign this whole thing because it's functional, but the design could use some work. Um, so, but we have everything in here, right? So kind of like the, the, the same thing as where we want to have documentation for all the functionality that we have, we try to also have a sample for all the features that we have in here. So here you can find kind of like the same structure and you will actually see that same structure if you go into these projects as well. So we've divided it up into like the alerts, animations, behavior, converters, extensions. So this should have looked familiar whenever you start working with this, right? And that kind of like follows this uh, flyout menu here as well. So again, if you go to the alerts right here, we have the snack bar and the toast. Um, you, we have a different, couple of options depending on what the feature is. We, we showcase a little bit uh, the, the different functionalities or properties that you might have. Um, so display default snack bar, you can just have this thing um, and it gives you some feedback also. Uh, a custom one, so this shows on top of this button with a little Windows logo in here or Microsoft logo, which is really cool. Or show it in a modal page and we get a modal page and then we do it like this, right? So. Um, these demos can either be born out of a bug that we might have where we are like, okay, something doesn't work in a modal page. Let's just add a little sample in there so we can test it. And then you can also see how it should work. 
Um, and that's kind of like how we go about this. Now, the toast is kind of very similar to a snack bar, but it doesn't have an action button. This is just for your default to pop up message to notify the user. This is a big toast. There we go. Um, and then we have the same thing for everything, right? So if we go into the converters, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of those. Um, on the outside, there's nothing really you can see here. But you know, if you look at the code, then you can see how it actually used, right? Like how you can um, add that to your project and what it actually will solve for you. So there's that. And again, uh, the things that speak most to the imagination is kind of like your views, right? So we have a couple of things with views. Um, our pop-ups, we also have some pop-up implementation. Um, multiple pop-up spades, and you can see we have then a ton of options, right? So we have a couple of different things, uh, a simple pop-up, there we go, a simple one. We have one with a button, also great. We have a couple with multiple buttons. So you can see what is going on here and, and what we uh, can do, right? So all the different variations. Oh, this one toggles in size. Well, that's really cool. You can do that at runtime as well. That's going on. And here then we have like our media element and that just starts playing that video. Uh, which is a very famous video. Uh, I think this is the first render from some tool or something. Uh, there's a bit of history to this, but everyone is using it, so I decided to use it as well. Um, and you can yeah, start and, playing this. Video. And, and this one's really nice because it's you know gives you the same uh, you know UX and consistency across platforms. That's you know difficult because these are you know iOS and Android specific implementations. Oh man, if you start looking at these kind of controls, they're super crazy hard. I don't know, like, and it's funny, then you can really see the difference in platforms. Like on mm -hmm. iOS, super simple. On Android, super hard. Uh, but also like one thing that's consistently hard across all the platforms is making the video play full screen. Um, on Android, it's basically not doable. On iOS, you can, but they have kind of like the restriction that it only goes full screen whenever you start playing. And then whenever you stop it, it goes back. So, you know, you can't really say from code, like, hey, video dot full screen, poof. Um, yeah. Hard to get it consistent. So that's the yeah. struggle of cross-platform yeah. developers, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> what uh, the chat room is asking. Like, uh, buttons on um, on the player itself, it, it varies yeah. per platform. Well, some... you have, like, so you have a couple of things, right? You have, you have the playback controls that are built in. So that that's these. Uh, yeah. But you can also say, like, this gives you this, right? So you can pause, you can play, you can fast forward and do all these things. But you can also say here, show playback controls down at the bottom. You can disable those, so they will go away, and you can't get them back. And now you have these buttons right here, right? So you could just do pause, play, and you can you can do it like that. And, you know, if you're a great designer, then you can probably find a way to put these buttons on top of this video and create something yourself, right? So that's definitely possible. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I mean, we appreciate the fact that despite having so much in the community toolkit, the team has taken the time to continue maintaining this one app that, you know, shows you everything. Uh, so, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I mean, I would be lying if this is not convenient for ourselves, right? Just creating yeah. these features as we go, detecting bugs this way. So uh, it's mostly for us, but it's definitely for you to benefit yeah. from. Couple of uh, conversations here, uh, Gerald, in the chat yeah. room. Uh, so Carl Codes uh, was talking about Sean, the other Sean. So the, this Sean is also <laughs> in the chat room, uh, and I, I didn't know this. So Sean wrote a book on microservices. So here, cool. here's here's something. Writing a book to me, like that's a mistake you make once in your life. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, uh, and and my mistake was on Windows 8, which was you know obsolete oh. like three months before it even came out. So good for you, yeah. Sean, to pick microservices. That's not going away anywhere. Um, and then um, uh, let's see. Uh, Scott was asking about uh, Google Maps. I, I think this is a different thing because like there is a ma official map yeah. control. Uh, so for iOS or Android, you're fine because you're going to get the iOS Maps and and the Google Maps. This is mostly yeah. for Windows. Yes. Yeah, so if we go, I closed it. Let's see if we can get it back. There we go. Uh, yeah. So if you use the official .dotted Maui Maps, you will get like basically that's the paradigm of .dotted Maui, right? Whatever you implement will um, uh, be mirrored in the platform app, uh, implementation of that platform. So on iOS, you're getting Apple Maps. On Google, you're getting Google Maps. On Windows, you're getting Bing Maps, right? That's the way we do things. But of course, there are people who are like, no, I don't want that. I want other things. So if you go back to my GitHub repository, GitHub slash handle, my handle, learn that in Maui, you also have the code part uh, where you have the components from Telerik, of course, go check those out. Uh, you have a couple of other UI replications, some extensions. So these are very handy, kind of like dotted Maui 
uh, templates that you can use. And then we have a bunch of plugins and there's definitely missing um, um, from this one. So please open pull requests if you're missing something. But here you have Maui Google Maps, right? So this one, um, does Google Maps everywhere. I think it only supports iOS and Android. So this one gets you also Google Maps on um, iOS. So you can have that. There's also, I don't think that's in here. Uh, you also, I'm just mentioning, name dropping all my friends here. Maps, mapsui.com, I think that's it. Yep, there we go. Um, which also has support for that in Maui. And here you can basically load any title provider that you have. Um, so here you can see it with Strava, um, I think by default, it's like open open street maps or what, what it's called. Um, so you can basically load anything in here uh, and that will also be consistent across platforms. So there's definitely options, right? That's always cool. Yeah, yeah. so um, this is the challenge of bringing too many of your friends. Everyone has to have a limited time here, but uh, yep. Gerald, <laughs> thank you for giving us an update. And you were very, uh, you know, um, politically correct in just mentioning Telerik, but you know, this is the ecosystem. There's Dev, <laughs> there's Dev Express, there's SyncFusion, there's everybody else building. We're all, so we're all friends. We're all friends. We're all friends. We're all making the ecosystem better. At the end of the day, we want people to be more productive. So yep. Gerald, Thank you so much uh, for taking the time uh, away from your wife uh, to come and join us here. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, let's see. I'll let's, tell you you uh, said hi. Yeah, let's bring down uh, your <laughs> desktop here. Uh, appreciate uh, your time and you know, appreciate all of the other folks that you mentioned who help out with the community toolkit. Uh, it's community driven and it's much appreciated. Yeah, we have such a wonderful community. So uh, I, I still didn't mention a ton of people, but I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, making this better, including you, Sam, for organizing this. And don't forget to donate for actual yeah. Maui because there's a lot going on here. We are playing happy, um, but on the actual island of Maui, there's a lot going on right now and they can really use your support. So make sure to donate to this if you can. Um, and I'm sure they will appreciate that. Yeah. Our goal is $1,000 um, by the end of this stream. Uh, so we can maybe do some matching. All of us are going to you know, try to uh, yes. chip in anything you can. Uh, that Absolutely. really helps. Yep, and this yep. is our Red Cross going straight to um, Maui. All right, uh, so with that, I'm going to bring in my next friend here, Dan, and have you say hi. Dan, to hey, Gerald what's going on? Hey, Dan. Oh, oh, yeah, shirt buddies. We all have the yeah, same. We all have the same <laughs> Not me, because I was streaming. Uh, this is a very uh, old school, like a OneDrive shirt of all places oh my that gosh. I could find today. But I do have all of the Maui shirts as well. They're very cool. <laughs> All right, Gerald, we're going to say bye to you. Thank yeah. You, thank you so much. Good Appreciate luck, Dan. Uh, talk to you later. Right. See ya. Bye.